Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Friday, the 5th of June 2020. We're remembering today Boniface of Crediton, who is a bishop, apostle to the Germans and martyr, and died in 754. Born in Crediton in Devon in the year 675, Winfrith, as he was known, took the name Boniface when he entered the monastery of Exeter as a young man. He became a Latin scholar and poet and was ordained when he was 30 years old. He rejected a safe ecclesiastical career in England and in the year 716 he became missionary to Frisia following the footsteps of Willibrord. He was eventually commissioned by the Pope to work in Hesse and Bavaria where he went off to consecration as bishop in the year 722. He courageously felled his sacred oak at Geismar and since the pagan gods did not come to the rescue, widespread conversion followed. He was a follower of a string, sorry, founder of a string of monasteries across southern Germany and made sure that they were places of learning so that evangelization could continue. Boniface was made Archbishop of Mainz in 732, where he consecrated many missionary bishops. He worked assiduously for the reform of the church in France as well, and managed to ensure that the more balanced rule of St Benedict was adhered to in all her monasteries. He crowned Pepin as the Frankish king in 751, but was already very old. While waiting for some new Christians to arrive for confirmation, he was murdered by a band of pagans on this day in the year 754. He has been judged as having a deeper influence on European history than any other Englishman. And so we remember him and all martyrs and bishops. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. Do you be praised and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Hymn for this evening is Breathe On Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with Thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am holy Thy, until this earthly part of me close with the fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. And our opening prayer. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. When generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts, 
and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power, to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to those who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My heart shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And a reading from the book of Job, chapter 5. Call now. Is there anyone who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Surely vexation kills the fool and jealousy slays the simple. I have seen fools taking root, but suddenly I cursed their dwelling. Their children are far from safety. They are crushed in the gate and there is no one to deliver them. The hungry eat their harvest and they take it even out of the thorns. The thirsty pant after their wealth. For misery does not come from the, the earth, nor does trouble sprout from the ground, but human beings are born to trouble, just as sparks fly upwards. As for me, I would seek God, and to God I would commit my cause. He does great things and unsearchable, marvellous things without number. He gives rain on the earth and sends water on the fields. He sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the devices of the crafty, so that their hands achieve no success. He gives the wise in he takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the schemes of the wily are brought to a quick end. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and grope at noonday as it as in the night. But he saves the needy from the sword of their mouth, from the hand of the mighty, so the poor have hope, and injustice shuts its mouth. How happy is the one whom the Lord reproves, therefore do not despise the discipline of the Almighty, for he wounds, but he binds up, he strikes, but his hands heal. He will deliver you from six troubles, in seven no harm shall touch you, in famine he will redeem you from death, and in war from this power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue. You shall not fear destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine you shall laugh. You shall not fear the wild animals of the earth. For you shall be in league with the stones of the field, and the wild animals should be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent is safe. You shall inspect your fold and miss nothing. You shall know that your descendants will be many, and your offspring like the grass of the earth. You shall come to your grave in ripe old age, as a shock of grain comes up to the threshing floor in its season. See, we have searched this out. It is true. Hear and know it for yourself. Here ends the first reading. Song of the Justified Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings 
for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, much more shall we be saved from God's wrath. Therefore, we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Second reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Then what advantage has the Jew, or what is the value of circumcision? Or much in every way, for in the first place the Jew will be entrusted, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Although everyone is a liar, let God be proved true, as it is written, so that you may be justified in your words and prevail in your judging. But if our injustice serves to confirm the justice of God, what should we say? That God is unjust to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means. For then, how could God judge the world? But if through my falsehood God's truthfulness abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? And why not say, as some people slander us by saying that we say, let us do evil so that good may come? Their condemnation is deserved. What then? Are we better off? No, not at all, for we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin, as it is written. There is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who has understanding. They, there is no one who seeks after God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness. There is not even one. Their throats are opened graves, they use their tongues to deceive. The venom of vipers is under their lips, their tongues are full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and misery are in their paths, and the way of peace they have not found. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Here ends the second reading. And our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way, rejoice with God now and for ever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, a promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way rejoice with God now and forever. So we come now to our prayers of intercession. We pray as always for the Church throughout the world, 
praying especially today for the Diocese of the New Guinea Islands in Papua New Guinea for its Bishop Dennis, for the Diocese of Algoma in Canada for its Bishop Anne. We pray in this Diocese of St. Asa for the Valacrucis Mission Area, especially for Martin Sel Snellgrove, the Mission Area Leader. And today we pray for Codwen. In happier times, the Church receives a succession of visitors during the warmer months. Pray that those who come to explore the inside of the building would encounter the one who is worshipped there. We pray as always for the Archdeacon, for Barry Wilson, the Archdeacon of Montgomery, and we pray as always for Gregory, our own Bishop, for all those who hold authority, for those who seek the common good in the Church. We pray for those who are persecuted in today's world, and for those who act as missionaries following in the example of St Boniface. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in authority at this time, praying for those who lead us, for those who govern us, for those who influence our lives. We pray especially for those who would seek to tear people from one another, who would seek division rather than unity, and would seek hatred rather than love. And we ask that you would turn the hearts of people of violence to the ways of justice and peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray particularly for those who have asked us to pray for them and for those who have no one to pray for them. As always, we pray for all those in nursing and residential homes, unable to see their families at this time, and especially Colin. And we pray for all prisoners cut off from family and friends, especially Daniel. We continue to pray for Luke and Emma, for Louise, Alwyn and Gwen, for Anne, for Sue, for Alex, for Amanda. And amongst those who are bereaved, we continue to pray for Andrew and Karen, and for Amanda, and for Judith and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember those who have gone before us in the faith, and those whose faith was known to God alone, praying especially for Anne, Joe, for Geraint, for David, whose funeral was today for all those we have loved and lost. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect. God, our Redeemer, who called your servant Boniface to preach the gospel among the German people, and to build up your church in holiness. Grant that we may preserve in our hearts that faith which he taught with his words and sealed with his blood, and profess it in lives dedicated to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me once again this evening.